Hello, everybody. I'm Miss Tania Poveda, and today I want to share something with you. I had a great class today with my students. It was in speaking practice, and it was really nice because they felt really motivated to speak, which is a big problem right now when we're having this English or any other language class because of the new technologies or because of the connection or because we are just shy or we're not used to these technologies. We don't want to speak in camera and we feel kind of off and comfortable. Well, this time uh, I'm going to share this information so you probably can use it in your classes too. So what I did was this. This is, uh, well, the beginning of my class. And it was playtime. So I made them, I made them to know that it was time to play. And they, they had, the only thing they had to do was to relax and try to speak. Then we had the rules of the games. The thing is that I divide this class in two parts, two sections. So we have this one. The first part was a role play. Do you know what a role play is, right? It's like you um, take a card or an envelope and then it's going to tell you a situation and you have to act that situation. In this case, speak as similar as you are that person in the role play. I'm going to show you, show you later. Well, me, in this case, the teacher is going to say your name, the student's name, and they will have to choose a partner. After that, they both choose a envelope that you have to open. Of course, it's me opening the envelopes. And inside you will have a conversation between two people. You will have to read it and act it. That's the first part which is like the most important one because it's the one that they have to speak and act. And it's kind of fun because um, you have all kinds of situations that I'm going to show you later. And on the second part, that was more like for volunteers. The first one was kind of mandatory for everybody to speak. They did it in a fun way. They were relaxed. They knew I wasn't grading. So it's not like, oh, that was bad. And then you have zero. No, no, they were really relaxed and they felt like, they were laughing and, and motivate each other to speak and they tried to help, so that was really nice. The second part, it's shorter. It's not for everybody because in that second part, we're going to have theirs, you know, like truth or dare. And they are quite fun theirs, so it was really fun. Let's continue. Well, here I make sure that they are ready and they understood the, the rules. And here we have the envelopes. So to do this, I use something called links. So you link the envelope to other um, slide, like an hyperlink. So you chose the picture when you are making the PowerPoint presentation, you go to, you take your mouse, you click the right button, and then it's going to say to link. So you link the envelope to the slide you want to you want you want to go. So I'll show you. I create links in all of these envelopes and on this section here too. So let's suppose this, I'm going to do it in order so you can see everything. If you go to envelope one, it's going to take you here. So we have first a student has to sell a cell phone and the second one doesn't have the money but he likes the girl. So in the end, it's like, okay, I don't have money, but I invite you out. So that's situation number one. We go back, we take envelope two. Of course, the order students pick the envelopes is not important. That's why they have different options and colors. So this is the second situation. Um, the student had a party in the house and police arrived and then um, his or her dad is calling like, hey, is everything okay at home? It's kind of noisy, what are you doing? So it's like a fun situation. Then you go back here in this arrow, on the left, this green arrow, there is a link to, an hyperlink. link. Let's go to number three. This is the third situation. So this girl is taking care of, was taking care of a cat she was supposed to look after the cat and the lady left, but she's calling her. The old lady is calling the girl to make sure that everything is fine with the cat. And then she's like, uh, 
can I talk to my cat? Can I see my cat or something like that? So it's because she lost the cat. So she doesn't have the cat anymore, the, 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 the student in this case. And well, you, you should see what happens when they are in those situations. It's kind of interesting. Okay, number four. Again, we have two um, students. The situation is about a uh, cell phone. So student A bought a cell phone and it doesn't work, it's broken, blah, blah, blah. So the student goes to store and the seller is like, you, you spill juice on it. So there is no guarantee anymore. And they have like this uh, discussion, this uh, argument about the situation because uh, one student wants the money back and the other one is like, there's no guarantee. So they, they are going to find new words to speak. Next situation. This is in a restaurant, so one student ordered food and the waitress um, took something different. The thing is that what you didn't know is that the first student, the client, ordered like 10 times, so she confused the, the waitress. And they are like, no, I didn't order. Yes, I did. So yes, you did. And they, they, are, they are having this argument on the restaurant. And here they can use a lot of vocabulary like um, for food or um, to apologize or things like that. So let's go back. And the last one is this one. So you went to the cinema wearing your mom's shirt. If it's a boy, you can say your dad's shirt. And the mom is coming back home and they both meet in the street. And she's like, hey, you're wearing my shirt. And the girl is like, oh, sorry. Or, or she's like, no, it's not your shirt. So they are going to have this situation in the street, mom and daughter talking about the same top. Remember that all of these are connected with links. So we finish this section with the speaking practice and the role plays, and then we can go to the second part. Here, as I told you in the beginning, let me show you this, okay. As I told you in the beginning, it's mostly for fun to relax, to feel comfortable with your classmates and practicing in front of a camera. And also, of course, you will need to understand what to do. So it's a good way to feel motivated to know new vocabulary. So you have, now I'm going to use shapes and colors. And students can choose like, I. so if the student doesn't know how to say circle, for example, which is kind of, uh, at this point, it's kind of obvious. But if they don't know how to say circle, they can say, I want red. So they can go for colors or they can go for shapes. So they say, I want red or yellow, purple, green, or blue. Or what I try to do today is that I motivate them to use shapes because sometimes we don't use them too often. So it's kind of easy to forget. So I repeat like three times. Remember that you can choose circle, triangle, arrow, square or star especially arrow is something that they don't use too much remember that we are in a in a in a country that we don't speak english too often it's not like our second language or, or something so there are words that they probably don't need them too much in class or watching movies or something like that so they they might uh, forget so again they can choose colors or or shapes I tried them to choose by shapes and they did. They, they didn't know what I was doing. Like, do you want star or do you want arrow? You want square, triangle, circle? Nobody's chosen the, the star. What about triangle? And they did. They, they, they listened to me and they repeat what I said. They never use colors. So I show you what I have here. Again, I use links to connect the slides so let's suppose that they i'm going to do it in order so let's go to circle this is the there so act like a chicken so as you can see it's not like it's not english they're not going to speak but they are going to understand the instruction and they are going to have fun let's go back triangle so here they have to howl like a wolf. 
in this case, we were doing like in partners, like in teams. So two students, like uh, between student A and B, who wants to do it? And they were like, B, A, B, A. So um, a student A was was really, really shy. And she was like, no, I don't want to do it. And then I told, okay, student B, help her, help her. And she did it. So they won because they help each other. There's not a prize. It's not a contest, but it was really fun. This is what we have in Arrow. Pretend to be a T-Rex, you know, a dinosaur, a very uh, brave one. Okay. Um, Nobody chose this one because of time, but I would love to see maybe one other class to do some somebody acting like a like a dinosaur. This is what we have in square or the green. Talk without moving your lips. And in this section, it was really fun because the student was making noises with her mouth, like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I pretend I understood and I was. I was making uh, questions to her, like, really? And what happened next? Oh my God, I can't believe it. Can you repeat? I didn't hear very well. So the student was making these noses. Everybody was laughing. She was laughing too. And I wanted to laugh too. I didn't do it, but <laughs> I'm the teacher. So I tried not to, but it was really fun. And finally, this is what we have in Blue Star. And it's act like a robot. In this uh, situation, the student was also acting, not only moving, but speaking. So she was speaking in English and also acting like a robot, which is another way that you can use English, you know, like in a different context. It's using your language, using the language, but also in a different situation. So it was really interesting to, to see how she was acting and how she was change, changing her voice to pretend to be a robot. And that was, this one for me, this one, this one was like the best there because you have two things here, act like a robot and also speak like a robot. That was really good. Okay. And here I have other link or other connection between slides go to the end. And with this, I finish my class. Right. So like always, I thanks. Uh, I thank everybody for attention, for participation and I tell them that they did a great, a great job, which actually happened. They had a wonderful time. I had a wonderful time and I could tell they were having fun too. So I'm pretty, me as a teacher, I'm motivated to do it again. So I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to find something else to do maybe next week and, and practice speaking and learning grammar, vocabulary while we are playing. My students are between 14 and 16 years old, which is very important to, it is very important to remember that no matter the age, everybody loves playing. So don't stop playing because they are big kids. Come on, we are adults and we like playing. We like watching on TV, maybe soccer games, or we, we like to play video games, or other people like to watch this, um, this contest TV shows. And if you could be in a TV show on a contest, I'm pretty sure you would. So don't stop playing with your students. Just, just do it. It's really fun. And which is even better is that they learn. They learn while, while they're having fun. So that's it. And I hope that this uh, video helps you to, to feel a little bit motivated to work under these circumstances, which is kind of different and harder for, for some people than other. Sometimes it's harder for you today, some other days it's harder for someone else. So everybody's having all kinds of troubles while well, I'm having all kinds of troubles too with my internet or my, or information or, or what, well, here we are, everybody is in this same situation. So I hope you enjoyed the video too. And let me know if you want uh, any advice about how I did the link, the connection between one slide and the other. Because you never saw, I went back and I was looking for the slide. Oh, this is, this is, no. It, it, it's then everything was connected. So here down in, under this video, I'm going to, I'm going to include a link where you can, that you can watch how to link one slide to the other in a PowerPoint presentation. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day and have wonderful classes. Bye-bye.